Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, welcome to Positive News Now. I'm your host, Gail Nowak. I'm here today with Sherry Reichart Ballou, who has spent the last 20 years practicing finding the gifts in everyday life. Using disappointment, depression, and anxiety as her teachers, Sherry has developed products and practices for celebrating ourselves, the people we love, and the shape of our lives. As the founder of Simply Celebrate, Sherry helps people appreciate who they are and the people they love through customized tribute books and other one-of-a-kind imaginative and impactful gifts. She also offers life coaching, and writes inspirational books and articles. And she's the author of Say It Now, 33 Creative Ways to Say I Love You to the Most Important People in Your Life. She's been seen in Success Magazine, Forbes, Red Book, In Style, Huffington Post, Modern Bride, U.S. News and World Report, and many more. So it is such an honor to have you here with us on Positive News Now. Sherry, welcome. Oh, hi, Gail. I'm so happy to be with you. Yeah, I'm happy to have you too. And I just, for those who are listening, um, Sherry and I go way back. We were just chatting about that before we hopped on the podcast. And I have actually used some of your inspiring creative ideas to create some gifts um, for for my loved ones. And I just love, first of all, um, how meaningful, (laughs) how meaningful Mm. and yet simple these things are. So I'm really excited to kind of d- dive into that. But before we do, why don't you just tell us a little bit more about Simply Celebrate and who you help? Oh, yeah. Thank you. And I know I love that. <laughs> I love that you've actually experienced some of the things that I do. That's very meaningful to me. So, so yeah, what, you know, what I, I do, and I, I work with mostly midlife women who are juggling career and family and, you know, at that time of life where a lot of us, I think, start to look around and think, you know, am I, am I living my life? You know, Gail, I love your, you know, be your best story tagline. And it's, it's that, right? Are we, are we living our lives and are we being able to step outside of all of those lists and lists and lists of things to do and obligations and responsibilities in order to enjoy being here and to really celebrate who we are? Right now we're, we're heading into the holidays and, you know, there's all kinds of ways that we, we celebrate moments of our life. It's not just, it's not just about holidays. Um, and I know for me personally, I, you know, I, I I don't, I don't need any more stuff. And I sort of feel like a lot of the adults in my life are in the same boat. They don't necessarily feel like they need a lot more stuff, but you still want to honor somebody and celebrate them. Um, so is that, one of the things that you help your your clients and, and your audience solve. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I know. I love that we sort of started talking a little bit about this. And I think I said to you, it's, it is one of my favorite things to talk about because especially here in the United States, and I know other places as well, there is a culture that's sort of gotten created, especially, you know, it seems to keep <laughs> keep getting, quote unquote, worse as the years go by, a culture of, um, let me buy you something to show you that I love you. And I really love to talk to people about alternatives. And I truly think that what people are really longing for is connection. We're longing to be live with people where we're not on our phones, we're not on screens, we're, we're just spending quality time together. And the other kinds of gifts I give are gifts that reflect why we love someone. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the other thing that people just cr- really crave is, is to feel that they're, they're loved for who they are, that they are enough. In fact, you know, more than enough mm-hmm. just by, be, by who they are. And we don't need to buy things <laughs> to prove those things. Yeah, you know it's it's fascinating to me. I recently um, took the the love the five the five love languages. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I don't know if yeah. You're familiar with that? I and, am. Wow, that was just so enlightening to just, and I did it with my kids too. Ooh, <laughs> so that was really neat too. Um, to, you know, to sort of see how our family expresses and and receives love and. It was interesting because my little one actually really loves gifts, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> like, like physical, tangible things. Um, 
and, and just knowing that um, it it changes it changes the dynamic. I feel like the way that you approach gift giving and, and expressions of love it really is so thoughtful because it's not just about how do I want to express my love to someone, but how would they want to receive it? And I just think it's so beautiful. Gail, I love that. Yeah. And I highly recommend that book to people because um, it is true. People, people do really love to receive in different ways. And I always like to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not against material gifts at all. Right. I, it's just, I think, I think you just use the word thoughtful, conscious, intentional are words I use around it. That what I'm, what I'm about is, is really helping people to see that it's not an obligation and Really, I, I hope it never is for people. Yeah, yeah, and 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 your gifts are your gifts and your ideas. Many of them are still that tangible item. It's just it, it's not that thing that you just go to the store and buy just because you have to do it. I mean, it it really requires some some thought and planning, and um, but it's fun. Like the process of doing it is fun too. Having having done some of um, these ideas. So one of the ideas that I got to do for my sister's 30th birthday was the the love list jar. Mm. And then I did it with my kids actually for, I think it was Valentine's Day last year. Oh, um, you did? And my husband too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I did it for all of them. And that was so fun. You know, they all, they all loved it. <laughs> they all loved it. My, my youngest has her she still has like her little hearts. I I got heart shaped memo pads and and hand wrote the notes and everything and um, had a cool little jar and she still got that on her desk in her room and I I can tell that sometimes she like takes them out and reads them and such a simple easy thing to do and and yet has continued to be a gift to her. Um, I love that, Gail. Maybe we should just fill people in a little tiny bit. It's yeah, not yeah, it's not very sure. hard to explain, but. Um, the love list is is basically what it sounds like. It's a list of all the reasons that you love someone and what makes them so unique to you and, and what makes them so lovable. And there are so many different ways to present it. Gail just talked about what I call a loveless joy jar, um, but they can be written on a piece of paper. They can be put in fortune cookies. They can put in Easter eggs in an Easter basket or a, you know, advent calendar. They could be, you know, sticky notes on the refrigerator. There's There's countless ways. And I love that you made them for all of your family. Yeah, yeah. We even, we adopted um, the idea for my brother in law's fiftieth, his fiftieth birthday celebration too, because he's you know he's he's not really big into like making a big deal out of things, right? And um, so we just created like this big poster that had like little bubble thought bubbles all over oh. it, and we all filled it in with different colored markers and presented it to him in his favorite place. So it's just like it's not just about um, I love that it's not, <laughs> it's not just about making somebody feel good. Right. And it, it, it's so much more, I don't want, I, I sort of feel like I'm trivializing it. It's so much more than expressing your love. Like it, it's a way to, it's a process of love, I guess is what I'm oh, trying to say. I, Gail, that's great. You know, I often use the expression love in action. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. And I don't, you know, tell me if I hope I'm not cutting you off, but but where where I always like to go with this is that the very first recipient of these kinds of gifts is us, and that's yeah. to me that's the secret of it. Right, that it, it is a process, and I feel like learning to love can be a practice that we we get better at, and we learn, and we can expand the way we love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, we're talking a little bit about some of the the outcomes that I've experienced, but I'd love for you to share, you know, other things that your clients have have experienced in taking on that kind of process and expressing their love in this way and um, just connecting with people on a deep, deeper level. Mm, yeah, well, I, I have a couple of stories that just came to mind that I would love to share quickly. Um one is, and, and this is it, it's actually to me the most poignant of all the stories I have, is one of my clients, uh, just, she heard about the idea of the love list and her husband was turning 53. Not a big year, right? Not a milestone year. But she and her children 
all secretly made him love lists and they gave it to him for his 53rd birthday. And he was a sort of person that could fully receive it. He, she said he cried when he received them. So moved. And she sent me a note afterwards telling me this. And then two months later, I got an email from her and her husband had died of a heart attack. Just completely, right. Completely out of the blue. He was so young, you know, for that. They, they had no idea. And the, the reason that is such a poignant story for me is a lot of times people would have thought, oh, I'll wait till his 60th or, you know, some big occasion or, and, and she didn't, she didn't wait. She heard the idea and they did it. And he, that was his last gift from them. Wow. Yeah. So it's just, I get so choked up whenever I think about it because it's, you know, and she's, I've, I've heard from her throughout the years and it's like those loveless are also such a comfort to her and her children Mm. because they have his spirit, you know, they captured his spirit in the moment and they get to have that still. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) That is, that is amazing. And I, um, you know, it just makes me think about how sometimes it it is really hard. I don't entirely know why (laughs) this is, but I think it's really hard for people to, be honest about their feelings for their loved ones. You know, you would think that it, it would be easy. And I think sometimes that it is, but then sometimes it's really hard too. Uh, I, and we do wait. We do wait to have those conversations or just say those things. I mean, even just simply saying, I love you to somebody, um, for, for some people it seems so easy and for others it's not. Absolutely. You know, and it's something I do always try and bring into the conversation is that I understand it's vulnerable and it can be for, I think for most of us, even, you know, I've been practicing this for many years and there are still times when, you know, it pushes against my comfort zone. But I think that with a lot of things, that's true. We, we need to just understand that maybe we're practicing in this case, love is a practice Mm. and expressing our love is a practice. Being more open is a practice and it does get a lot easier. I mean, certainly for me, like now it's really simple with people that are, you know, in my circle, friends and family. I practice a lot now with strangers or people I don't know because that sort of pushes up against my comfort zone. But um, I always want people to know, like, it's okay to be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. There's, there's no... There's, there's no rule saying you can't be uncomfortable, right? And and that's and it's the other side of that that I think um, that's where the biggest rewards lie, right? Yes, yes. And I I just briefly want to speak about just another thing that had come to mind when you asked about um, you know the impact because I, I feel like one of the other places that is really important to talk about, and I know this is a lot of your work as well, it's where I feel so aligned with what you're doing, which is celebrating ourselves, being able to acknowledge our own best story and to step into that even when that's uncomfortable. And I think that's another, like I, for example, I just had a, a coaching client last week who she really wanted uh, to be stepping into a different kind of leadership role. And she wanted a $10,000 raise and we worked together for several months and she got both of them. And that was great. Right. I love that. I love that she got that acknowledgement and the money, but actually what was more important was who she became to herself in the process. Mm. You know, she learned, you know, we worked a lot on celebrating who she was as a leader to really practicing you know, we, for months, actually, she practiced being that person way before she asked for the raise in the new, the new job. And I think that that's another thing that is like, it's so important who we are in the process. It's kind of, instead of, oh, this is the goal that I want to reach. It's really asking the question of who am I going to become in order to reach that? (gasps) Goal. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're beautifully said. Exactly. <laughs> and and who we become in that process because it's sort of calling to us, right? I mean, right. usually there's something calling to us. And when we get, we allow ourselves, we give ourselves permission to be that person now, we've already have 
we already have the outcome we wanted. And the rest of it is, is, you know, it's icing on the cake. It's wonderful. But we've become the person that we imagined. And to me, that is just, I, and across the board, you know, and I were talking about this, you know, we can go back to the holidays, you know, who we become in the process of really consciously celebrating the holidays in a way that feels aligned with us. There's the, the payoff, right? It's like, we're, we're totally aligned and then we're more present with people. We're more alive. We have more vitality and energy. Yeah. And you can't beat that. You really can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. I hope I, I, I never want to go back. <laughs> well, I, and it, it all sounds so simple, but, but really it's, it's one thing to sort of know it intellectually. Right. And it's another thing to practice it, like you're saying. And so what are some of the common myths, um, that that hold people back from practicing and and celebrating everyday life and and really sort of making those moments either the special moments or even kind of the the everyday moments into you know something meaningful and beautiful yeah yeah you know a couple of things come to my mind right away and i think the first thing is um celebrating special occasions I mean, and not that there's anything wrong. I love celebrating special occasions, but it's that way that in our culture, and I think other cultures, um, that's the time to celebrate. Uh, we celebrate when someone gets married. We celebrate when you have a milestone birthday. We celebrate our children. And then the rest of it becomes just this sort of vast, you know, mm. you know non-celebratory time. And so obviously that's why I bring in the the everyday life piece. I think the other thing is that People think that maybe certain certain people are more wired that way. People often say to me, "Oh, well, easy for you," mm. but you know, <laughs> they don't know yeah, my and, backstory. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to get to that too yeah. because I know, <laughs> I know that it it is intentional and it is it, you. It is a practice for you. I know you you walk your walk and talk your talk. And then I think that the the other myth is that it takes a lot of time. Because it or money, and it it doesn't. Mm. To me, the reason I have simply in my uh, the name of my company is that there are countless, countless ways that we can bring more celebration into our own lives and those of the the people we love. That it doesn't take time or money, and it can really just be the intention. It's the taking time. You know, I guess that's the time part is to reflect. But that can happen in minutes. Yeah. You know? Probably right now, people could think, you know, could just kind of like drop into themselves and really think about someone that they they deeply care about and come to that place of, wow, I would really love to to do something special for this person today. And then in a, in a couple of minutes, probably think of something. Oh, you know, I could take them some flowers. I could, you know, invite them to to dinner. I could call them, you know, and just tell them I'm thinking about them and how much they mean to me. Simple. Very simple and beautiful. So what inspired you to create Simply Celebrate? I, I, I do want I do want to hear I want people to know that, you know, it it, it's, it is a practice, uh, but it's well worth the practice. So tell us a little mm. bit more about your backstory. Yeah. Yeah. So at, as you know, Gal, because we've had this conversation, I in my twenties, I went through a very long, years long uh, period of of being suicidal. Thank God I never, you know, I never actually took action on it, but I would fantasize a lot. I planned it a lot. I was convinced that I was a mistake. I wasn't supposed to be here. And a lot of that, you know, now in retrospect, I understand that as a young woman, I didn't allow myself to to live out loud. I didn't li- ex- allow myself to express myself. I was trying very hard to do what I felt what I was supposed to do to be responsible, to, to fill obligations in life, everything I had learned, and they didn't fit. Now, I know that all now. At the time, I just thought there's something really wrong with me. You know, it's just, right. I felt like a black cloud. And, and I think this is pretty common for people, no matter, you know, what level of, of depression or, or anxiety they might have, that, that sense of, I'm just a burden on people. And I was really fortunate because when, at some point, it started to just feel like everything was closing in on me. And it I always describe it as this iron wall closing in because that's what it felt like. Everything, my whole life was getting smaller and the voices in my head were getting louder. And fortunately, I was led to a meditation class. 
total grace that I was led there. <laughs> and on one of the in-breaths, you know, you focus on your in-breath and your out-breath. And on one of the in-breaths, I can feel it right now as I do it, there was a sense of no pain. And it came to me in the sense of like, I don't want to kill myself right now. Mm. And it was so profound. And I, I, I saw it even, and I still do as like a little pinprick of light in that iron wall, like just a tiniest little light. Like this isn't as solid as I thought. And that changed everything for me. I started going around the next day looking for pinpricks of light in order to sort of rest in. Oh, I don't want to kill myself. Now I'm holding my cat. She's purring. This is, this is actually, this is fine. Or, you know, I, I, the sun would come in through the window in a certain way, or I would hear a song that I really loved. And I started calling them pinpricks of light. And at some point I realized, oh, I don't have to wait for these to drop in. I could actually create these. You know, so that was that was like a really big revelation for me. But the the largest revelation for me was after I started practicing that for a while, like creating those for myself in order to keep myself rooted here on earth. At some point I I looked up from my own, you know, it's like I, I was so immersed in my own like what's wrong with me, why can't I be the right person? And I I started looking around and realizing there are a lot of people in the dark. There are a lot of people, even if it's a momentary being in the dark, you know, maybe they're not depressed like I was, but maybe just, you know, they're grieving, they feel lost, they're disappointed about something. Something happened that day to make them feel angry or upset. And I just started thinking, how could I create pinpricks of light for other people? And that's kind of how my whole practice and my business started. Wow. <laughs> just, just wow. And it, I, I know that we've shared the story before, but hearing it again, I just want to, I just want to follow up on what you just said about, you know, it, it's, it's not necessarily about this, this deep depressive level. And it's kind of like, this is what it means to be human. You're going to have those, mm. those moments, um, those those periods of, of darkness and actually thank God for those periods of darkness, right? So that you can look for the light <laughs> and create oh, that light. Yes. Yes. And, and you're right. Everybody, I mean, none of us escapes, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, it just comes even, even if you're, you know, happy 90% of the time, it, well, <laughs> there's going to be a little bit of unhappiness from, from time to time. And, and even, I, oh, sorry. Well, well I, I was just going to say, I, it, it's, I think what I one of the things that I appreciate so much about your story and your message and your work is that it's it, it's just a reminder that even in that moment of darkness you know you talk about that iron wall and and, and things closing in on you and you and you think that you've lost all control um it's temporary yes it's totally temporary Yes, 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 yes. And again, I'm just, I'm so grateful because meditation is, is obviously my, m one of my best teachers for that. And then since practicing that, right. And what I was going to say is it is true that I think, you know, some people are happy most of the time and they do have just moments of the darkness. And also those people, those times for myself, I always see that too of that's when it's the easiest to raise our head and look around. And, you know, at any given time, there's someone in my life who has just lost someone they love. Someone's grieving. There's someone who's getting a divorce. There's someone whose children have left the house and they don't know what to do, you know, with themselves. There's, there's always somebody in my life who is experiencing some kind of darkness. And those, this is the real, for me, the real secret of everything that I do is that it's, I'm always the first recipient. So whenever I do something intentional, to bring some light, I'm in the light. There's just no way around that. It's just beautiful how that works. Mm, absolutely. So before we wrap up, is there anything that our listeners should know that we haven't yet covered? I mean, I, I'm sure that we could talk for hours <laughs> <I know>. about <laughs> this. <laughs> 
Wow, that's a great. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what I really most want to say to people, and this is ultimately where where my work travels, is I do one on one retreats with people where we really focus on what is it that you want for your life. And we could look in the smaller picture again. Let's go back to the holidays for just a second. Um, my family decided 10 years ago that we were no longer going to give material gifts because it did feel like an obligation and it, it didn't fit us. And instead, we create uh, what we call the holiday hoopla. We, we create a whole day of activities and a great meal. And to me, that's been one of my greatest teachers and what I love to offer people. That may not be your thing to do, you know, a holiday event, but there might be something. It might be planning something special that you do with your family that doesn't that doesn't um, look like a material gift, but it's a gift of time and love and experience. Mm -hmm. And just to open up to those ideas, you know, throughout the year, like, you know, what, what can I, what can I offer in the way of what best fits me and this other person, because this is a relationship and a gift reflects that relationship. So I guess just offering people some quiet time every once in a while to really settle into what best works for them. Again, I love your I love your tagline so much. You know, what is the best story for your life that you want to create? I would just love to hear a little bit more. You talked about your your retreat before we wrap up. I you talk about retreats. We've talked a little bit about your products. We talked a little bit about your your book. Um, I just think that you have a lot of neat ways that you can work with people. So, is there any other way um, that you that you work with folks and help them help them to to create magic in their life? Well, I'll tell you one of my favorite things, and it's a little unusual because I don't know anybody else that does this. So, I'll I'll just say this. So, one of the things that I do is I do what I call uh, loveless coaching, which is <laughs> basically for anyone who might think like, "Wow, that sounds really great. I would love to make." something like that, a joy jar or fortune cookies or something for someone I love, but I can't even imagine how I would come up with 10 things, much less 20 or 30. So I get on the phone with people for half an hour and just have, we have a great time. We just talk about the person that you want to make this gift for. I take care of, you know, jotting down everything that gets said. I always ultimately have between like 25 and 60 things that come out of a, a short conversation. And so I help people to do that. And I think that it's, it's, again, it's one of those things that is so much fun for me. And it really helps the other person who might not quite feel like they're ready to do that on their own. How can our listeners find out more about Simply Celebrate? Well, I'm at uh, simplycelebrate.net. Very important, the dot net. Oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> and also am on Instagram and Twitter and everywhere like that as Simply Celebrate. So pretty easy to find me. I would love to connect with people. Um, people can also email me, uh, sherry at simplycelebrate.net with any sorts of questions or, you know, celebration ideas or whatever. I I'm, I'm love connecting with people live. Until next time, remember, be your best story and share your positive news now. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.